So they're getting there. But, you know, as a movement, the Black Speculative Arts Movement and Afrofuturism uh, really had to, had to speak to Black futures that just wasn't being done. But the Black Speculative Arts Movement, we call it BSAM for short, these BSAM festivals that have been going on across the country, they've been expanding in the US, embraced by Canada, in Europe, and in South Africa. The sheer poster art itself, principally done by Stacey Robinson and others, is worthy of an exhibition. I was lucky to have the chance to be part of a futures computer mixed reality lab called Dynamic Lab. And they were opening themselves up to the community to see how their mixed reality technology could help augment the future visions of their communities around them. And I got this vision of what if we had a map of Wakanda? And as we went through the different regions of Wakanda, we saw people's alternative visions of the future. So we actually created a little demo of that. And it was really fun to, to see it come into existence. We even put Bosco Conti there too, uh, singing Afrofuturism <laughs> in this little blurb. You know, Ahmed Best, he played Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars. He, he came to uh, the studio uh, with, a, with an idea of a black uh, Star Trek comedy. And they were like, what are, you, what are you saying? Black people aren't interested in the future. And that really struck me and him that, wow, you know, the white patriarchal st structure doesn't get it. That Afrofuturism is something that can feed not only black souls, but everyone's soul in creating more varieties of imagination. In talking, we kept coming to, back to the same point, that usually when we're in the room, we're the only people of color talking about the future. And he said, why don't we create a podcast together? So we did, and we call it the Afrofuturist Podcast, where Ahmed, for an hour with one, one on one, has these um, in-depth conversations with people that we don't usually see. So the Afrofuturist Podcast is in its third year right now. And so we are trying to uncover the stories of Black people and others that are doing work about the future. So that's part of what we do. So at Dynamic Land, I met a great white ally of mine and friend, Eli Kosminski. And together, we created uh, a game called Afro Rhythms from the Future. We really realized we needed a game that spoke to the Black experience and to people of color and indigenous people. We decided to take an existing forecasting game called The Thing from the Future. A uh, great game by Stuart Candy and Jeff Watson. We've uh, play tested this game in a number of venues. And with the help of a research, creative research group called The Fathomers, it's a card deck of uh, about 100 cards. People have different roles that they play as traveler, seer, or elder. And um, they then uh, get dealt a set of cards to play their role. Now this game, what we noticed, and from folks like Jake Dunnigan and Jay McGonagall who've done work on this, Jay McGonagall was super better in using games to heal people. We've thought about this game as a way to help rework our memories, rework black memories by creating new scenes and new futures that renew positive associative neural pathways. You see the regions of the brain that celebrate the past or that form the past also form our futures. They're in the same regions through MRI studies. So what if we used gaming to heal trauma as a call for a futures therapy of the mind to jam and heal the epigenetics of black trauma? What if we create this community futures literacy program with a black perspective in mind that can support healing young and adult minds? The California Black Speculative Arts Movement is launching in July. And in partnership with the Museum of Children's Arts, MOCA, and Game Heads, we're about to launch our 2020 Imagining with Afrofuturism initiative, the Black Future School, the community future school, that is, where Black futures matter. We're really intentionally thinking about the community future school to increase the literacy of futures thinking with everyone, starting with the Black perspective in mind. Because what we're noticing with activists and people right now that the movement needs an imagination to think further. And it's provocative too. Like defunding the police is great as a provocative point to talk about the redistribution of resources or to increase resources for everything. And how do we use that as a starting point to recreate and reimagine our core institutions? So having a community future school in place with young people, young adults, older people, 
people in general, where black futures matter, we will help to enable people to see the signals around them of the future and to weave them in storytelling scenarios that they share with each other through our game, through other types of games, to really envision the future of their communities together. What we envision is an equitable futures network of California, a regional network, where communities from indigenous people to LGBTQ communities can share and demonstrate and showcase their visions of the future. 